We're moving to the next talk now. Uh, let's give a big round of applause for Magdalena, a WordPress developer and evangelist. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, is it okay? Good. Uh, hi, I'm Magdalena Paczorek and I'm from Poland. Uh, I work in a local hosting company in a marketing department as a uh, part of my job is uh, to develop and maintain our websites. And when we first built our main website, uh, our WordPress website for marketing purposes, it was more than four years ago. Uh, and uh, it was the early days of the blog uh, editor. But because my team needed some tool to be able to create you know, landing pages and do A-B tests, we thought like, since it's already in core, we're going to use it. And for the last uh, four years, I, you know, could witness the evolution of the software, uh, which is quite fascinating for me, uh, to be honest, uh, and also uh, to develop my skills as a developer. And since, uh, and uh, this uh, block editor grown in to, to be a, a really powerful tool, uh, but I still hear these uh, opinions that it's really, you know, it's still falling behind other page builders, that you can only build some basic websites, but nothing really uh, too complicated. And uh, basically that uh, maybe it's not really useful for many use cases. And, for, and I picked this topic for the Work and Bureau because I wanted to sort of challenge these opinions. Uh, and I wanted to build a listing page, a listing website, uh, that would list, for example, cars, uh, which is a little bit more complex than a, uh, just a small brochure website for uh, small businesses. Uh, and I wanted to see how much of this website can be built with no code, with just block editor, and for which features we will still need uh, to code. So I divided my talk into, okay, I divided my talk into three parts. Uh, the things that we need to think about when building this kind of listing website. So the first one is the data, because if we're building the listing website, the important feature to have it on such a website is to have some sort of filters, right? That uh, the user could filter out the post, for example, uh, on the car listing, they only want to uh, display BMWs or something like that. So the data is very important. Then the layout. The layout is also important because with page builders, there is a, you can build any layout with page builders. It's not a problem. Also with the block editor. So building the layout is not a problem. The problem is maintaining it later on so that uh, you can make changes in one place and then it will get applied everywhere on the, web, uh, on the website. So this is really challenging with page builders. And I wanted to see how, uh, if this can be solved with uh, the block editor. And also the styles, obviously we need to apply some uh, styles to the website. So this is also important. So let's start with the data. So WordPress has three like major data types slash content types for posts, right? Custom post types, custom taxonomies, and uh, post meta. So I've built this custom post type for car. Uh, and this has to, the custom post type still has to be registered with the function, register post type function. Uh, and then I set the uh, showing rest to true so that uh, the block editor would be enabled on this page, right? And then I build this layout. And this is the layout that I built just with core blocks. Uh, and this is like the ultimate experience I would like to provide to the users so that they can um, edit visually in a true what you see is what you get experience. Uh, but of course, this is not as simple as just putting some blocks together uh, because we have some challenges, especially the data. So uh, if you want to provide some sort of filtering, so some data needs, uh, can't be just added as uh, regular blocks, as paragraph blocks, because all of this, uh, uh, this layout is saved as HTML, as one HTML, and then the uh, particular data, like the price or the color, right, it's, it would be saved together. And so it would be impossible to filter out the, um, the post uh, so that the data has to be stored somewhere separately in the separate places in the database. And so how to deal with it in a block editor? So the first thing to do, we can register taxonomy. I just registered the taxonomy with the register taxonomy function. Also, there's no UI for creating new taxonomy. You have to create it with the, uh, with the code, but then we get a lot for free. So first thing we get for free, is the UI, right? So the, this UI here, 
So the checkbox is that the user can uh, create new terms, right? They delete it, uh, rename them. This is all coming for free when we register taxonomy. And also the users can also select the uh, appropriate terms, uh, the brands of the cars or whatever, uh, uh, out of the, in, the, in this UI. And then the second thing, what is great about the taxonomy, uh, is that uh, it provides us with the templating. So uh, we can have the pages for, for example, BMWs, and it comes out of the box. So we can just create a, a template in the site editor, also in the note code, in note co no code, uh, and uh, it will be handled by WordPress because WordPress recognizes the URL of the term and then it would load appropriate uh, template from the template hi hierarchy and then uh, we can display a uh, specific post, post for specific terms. So this all comes for free and it's great, but it has one problem, right? We can probably uh, notice uh, that, that at the moment in this UI, the user can actually select more than one a term. So that's a problem because uh, also by accident, you know, but this is not really user friendly. So I wanted to create something that is more user friendly. So I created my own controls. You see the site editor and the block editor, it has this slot fill system. So what it means is there are certain slots or so like empty spaces uh, in a few places around block editor that we can insert our own components into it. And this one is plugin editor, plugin document settings panel, um, the slot fill. Uh, where I could insert my own component. So I created the, this select component, which would load the term, the term, the parent term, so the brands of the, uh, of the cars, like to the first select, and once the user selects the brand, then the second select would appear, and they can uh, select the brand for this, uh, for the, uh, the model of a car of this brand. So this is much better user experience, but this can't be done in no code. Uh, this actually requires some JavaScript uh, skills and understanding of how you know, uh, to, to work with block editor and the data layer of WordPress in JavaScript. Uh, but it's already a little bit better user experience. But I wanted to push it a little bit more and create something that offers this true uh, visual editing experience, because why not uh, give the the, the users the possibility to edit the data right where they see it. So in the CLO table, right, they don't need any uh, sidebar panels for it. They could be just editing right in the, uh, uh, in the yellow table in the content area. So for this, I needed to create my own block uh, that works really similarly to the previous one of the controls in the side panel. Uh, they also load the taxonomies and they save to the taxonomies, but they can be used in the inside of the content. So this is really great. The, I really like the experience of visual editing. So this is the taxonomies. Uh, there is also another uh, data type slash uh, content type in WordPress, which is uh, the post meta. Post meta you probably already know very well, especially the ACF. A plugin that is used very widely in the agencies, especially. Uh, so with uh, this plugin, we can create the meta boxes, the custom fields for the data, and they, they get saved to the post meta table in the database. Uh, but the ACF is a great plugin. It's great for, cast, uh, for classic uh, editor, but in my opinion, not really perfect for the block editor uh, because uh, it just creates this distraction in the in the content area, and I want to have this really um, visual experience for the users. So first thing that I've done was to create my custom controls for the side panel. So this is the, exactly the same um, uh, slot fill that I've used for the taxonomy, and just created some controls to, uh, for the users to be able to, uh, to add the data, like the year of production year or the price of the car. Uh, and then I binded it to the paragraph block. So the, the block bindings API, this is a new API that uh, I think it was included in WordPress in the last version and it's still, it's early days. So it's still early in development and it will be, um, it, it will be becoming more and more powerful with time. Uh, but at the moment it works with post meta and it's read only. So what it means we can bind the block, for example, the paragraph block to the meta, uh, meta field or meta uh, table in the, in the database. And so we can pull the data from somewhere else, not from the user typing in the, in the paragraph, but from somewhere, uh, and it will show up in the paragraph block. So at the moment, the user can't edit in the paragraph. We need some sort of inputs for the user to be able to save the meta, but 
uh, but at some point, that's the goal for this API, uh, for the users to be able to also edit the paragraph and that it will be saved to the database in post-meta rather than just as HTML. So uh, this is very, very powerful. And at the moment, only post-meta is supported, but you can also create your own uh, bindings. And I created the bindings like before for the taxonomies. So I, but it, it has to be custom made and custom made in code. But ultimately, the block bindings API, what is the most powerful about it, is that ultimately it's all going to be um, sort of people will be able to use it in no code, 100%. So uh, create post, like register post meta, uh, there will be UI for it. Uh, create uh, post meta to link the post meta to the. Uh, uh, to the blocks, uh, so all of this will work out of the box in no code, no code required for this. So, uh, and probably this will happen probably till the end of the year, uh, because this is uh, now very important API that is under development. Uh, so I really recommend you to take a look at it. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to have this experience, the future experience of block bindings, that the user can also uh, edit the data when they see it, not only uh, read from the database. So for this, at the moment, I had to create my own block that would work with PostMeta, that would read from PostMeta and then save to PostMeta. Uh, and the user can edit it as a paragraph block in the same way. So for this, I don't need any custom fields, any meta boxes. Uh, and the site panels because the user just edits the data right where they see it. So I really love this experience and this is possible to be built, but at the moment only with code. And the last thing I've done with the data and with my blog is to register block variations. Uh, because I have quite a few data and I didn't want to, uh, to add options to the meta block so that the user would have to change uh, the options at the time. So I could register uh, block variations from this one block uh, and just set uh, certain uh, meta keys as default for each variation. And then so the user sees it as a different blocks, but it's actually one block that it's uh, just has, uh, is connected to the different meta fields. So it grabs that data from the different uh, meta fields. So uh, this is also something to look into. Okay, so once we have the data in place and it's uh, the data is stored separately in the database, even though the user might see it as a, just a part of a content, but it's stored in the database. Now we can create the filters for, for, uh, uh, for the post. So this is uh, quite okay, right? For the website that we're trying to build. And so now let's move to the layout. The layout also has some ch challenges because the site editor is there. We can build layouts, uh, also quite complex layouts with the site editor, but then I want to build a layout that is maintainable in the future, right? So I can build it in one place, and that it can be uh, then um, it can be then um, edited in one place. So that uh, because that that's a challenge with page builders. Oftentimes, these websites would be built in a way that then when you want to make changes, the user has to go to each page individually and make these changes, which is unacceptable, really. So uh, how to how to approach building layouts for for this post type? Uh, so first uh, thing uh, I be, well design or whatever uh, you call it this uh, uh, this uh, post right the layout for the post and the design for the post but the first question that I had was so there are quite a few elements right there is like a, a header and a footer there's this yellow table there's a title the featured image some description some gallery so, but what goes into the template and what goes into the content? This is quite confusing when we're building with, uh, with site editor and uh, block editor. So uh, I thought, okay, first approach would be that to put almost everything in a template. It's similarly uh, what we would uh, have done with classic uh, theme. Uh, and then just keep the description and the gallery in the content because the gallery has a nice UI, the gallery block. Uh, and so I wanted to keep it in the content area. Uh, and the rest would be the template. And then so in the site editor, when building a, a single card template from blocks, this would be uh, how it would look like, right? With core, I just use the core blocks for it. So there is this content uh, block in which uh, into like in this place of content block, the content of the post would load on the front end. So this is how it would look like, but then the editing would look like this. 
So this is not a true what you see is what you get experience because well now the user only has this paragraph and gallery block in the content and they have to fill in the, the data in the side panel here uh, that will show up in the yellow table on the front end but they still have to preview it. So that's not ideal but the benefit of uh, having most of it in the template is that the things that are in a template can be edited in one place, right? In a template editor and it, it gets applied. And also the template can, can be saved as HTML uh, in the theme, so it can be tracked with Git. So there are some benefits to it. Uh, the second approach, I thought, maybe I'll try out the second approach. So just put the header and the footer in the, uh, in the template and then keep everything in between as content. So this would um, mean that the template would look like this one. So it would have like only the header and the footer and the content block in between. And then everything from the post would be loaded to the content area. But now the editing of the uh, post would look like this one. It would be more uh, like what you see is what you get because all the data would be there and uh, I could uh, make the yellow box editable and they could edit just when, where they see it. Uh, so uh, this is great experience, but it has some challenges. Uh, to which I will come back in a moment. So this is the, actually this is something new uh, that is, I had to figure out how to preview it because uh, I don't know if you know, but at the moment we have post editor for editing posts and the site editor where you, where you can edit like uh, patterns, templates and so on. And the site editor ultimately will become a new WP admin. So everything from the old WP admin will be moved to this, uh, to this new site editor view also the post types and the editing of the post. So ultimately, this will be the view of, uh, of the post, of editing the post, but as you can see, there is a header and a footer also included and all parts from the template. So the user really wouldn't know which parts of it are the template and which are the content because it is all going to be blended into one view. Uh, so maybe ultimately, it's, it really doesn't matter how we approach it, but this, I'll come back to this thought a little bit later. So, okay, this is great. We can, uh, we sort of figure it out. So let's say I've chosen the first uh, approach and uh, it's, uh, it's great because most of it I can edit through the template. Uh, but now the first problem that you might have thought about is that when the user creates new post, like by default, there will be empty, right? Empty content. So this, uh, you can't expect from the users to add the same blocks for uh, every post. So this would be uh, not really usable for this kind of uh, page. So what, what can be done is, what, and the, what I did is to create the template for the post. So, so this is the template, it's just a paragraph in the gallery that should be default template for each post or the car post that is created for a new post. Uh, and this can be defined in the uh, register post type function. You can pass the array of blocks there and it will be loaded every time when the user creates new post. So this is great because uh, they don't have to add their own, uh, the blocks, they don't have to remember about it. It's just there, they, they, this is the default view and they just you know have to fill it with content. But the problem here is that uh, they can also remove blocks, move them around, add other blocks to it. So this is also not something, not exactly something that we would want. So there is this template log property uh, in the register post type function. So what it means, we can say, okay, we want this template, the paragraph and the gallery, and then we want to lock it so that the user can't remove it, can't move it, can't do anything about it, just edit the content. So this is how the block looks like when the template lock is set to false, which is the default setting. Uh, and so you can see there are all options are available. They can move it, they can uh, delete uh, the, uh, the block. So uh, not ideal, but another setting, we can set it to content only. And this is great setting because when we set the template lock to content only, this is how the, uh, the toolbar will look like. And this was the previous one. So this is the, uh, the default one and this is the content only. So in content only mode, they can only edit the content. All controls for editing styles are gone. Uh, they can't move it, they can't remove it. They can only, in the image, they can only change the image, set the alt, set the title, uh, set the link and maybe crop the image. That's all they can do. They can't remove it, they can't change it. And so this is great. And the same goes for the paragraph block. 
So uh, this is working perfectly and the template is now locked and this is it. Like you can fill it with data and you can't do anything more about it. But there's one more problem here. Uh, let's say it's working fine. Uh, the client added like 100 posts and now after 100 posts, the client comes to us and says, mm, you know what, uh, but I want this gallery on top and the description on bottom. So uh, can we change it? And of course you can change it in the register uh, post type function in the in the template. This is not a problem, but it will only apply to the new post. So that's the problem. And what about the posts that are already published, right? They will stay uh, as before. So that's also not really acceptable for us. We don't want to change it individually on, it, on each post. So there is one more thing we can do. We could actually create a pattern out of, it, out of it. So put the paragraph and the gallery into a pattern and make this pattern synchronized. Uh, so, and then add the synchronous pattern as a template, not a, in individual blocks. Uh, so what it means, the synchronized patterns have been in, uh, in WordPress core in a block editor, I think since the beginning of the block editor. So what it means, we can create a pattern, set the styles, set the layout, and then uh, add this pattern to multiple pages. And then when we want to change something, we change the pattern, we change the color, and it gets applied everywhere the pattern is uh, added on the website. And it's great, but the synchronized pattern means everything is synchronized. So uh, the styles are synchronized, the layouts are synchronized, and the content is synchronized. So also, for example, the, the photo would be synchronized uh, across uh, like every page. So this is not really what we want. Uh, and here comes the overrides. Overrides for sync patterns are not yet in core. They will be included in core in the next version, in the next month. So what it means, we can create the sync pattern and then say, okay, I want the images and the uh, and the paragraph to, we want to enable over uh, overrides on these uh, content. So what it means is that now in this pattern, the styles and the layouts will be synchronized across the instances, but the content can be different for every page. So this is exactly what we need for this use case because uh, then the user could change the text, could change the, uh, the uh, photos, but when they want to edit, for example, change the order of paragraph and the gallery or change the uh, styles, then they will go to the patterns in the site editor and then the pattern would open in an isolated view and then you can make some changes to the pattern. And once you click save, it gets applied everywhere. On the published pa uh, pages, on the ones that are going to be created in the future. So this sort of solves the problem of, you know, having, that we don't have to edit on multiple pages. We, we can just edit in one place. So that's why I said before that maybe it really doesn't matter now or wouldn't matter in a short time, uh, whether we make something a template, template part or, or the content because it can be done as sync pattern with overrides and then it will still, uh, we will still have this functionality that we added in one place. The only thing uh, different about the patterns um, uh, than the templates, that templates can be saved as HTML files, but uh, patterns, uh, they only are saved to the database. So that's quite, quite difficult to track it with Git, for example. So there are some discussions about it, uh, how to make it work. And I wanted to do one more thing because there's one more thing the user could do to actually make some changes to the uh, to this template or to, to, to the layout. They could edit HTML. They could change the mode from the visual view to the code view, and they could make some edits. And this is uh, this is really bad idea because I don't know if you, uh, if you know that you actually shouldn't ever change the HTML uh, here in the editor because the way the editor works, it just reads the HTML from the database that it's saved to the database and it tries to extract some data from it. Like for example, from the paragraph block, it tries to extract the, the content, the class and uh, a few other properties. And then uh, it will create a state for the application for, uh, from this data. And then you edit it and you, for example, change the class name. So this class name gets changed and then the editor saves it and it serializes it to HTML. And so it happens all the time, this parsing uh, serializing of the data. And uh, when we change the HTML, and then when the editor reads the HTML, they uh, maybe come up, they see some sort of, some part of HTML that wasn't defined in the source code. 
so the parser doesn't know what to do with it. And then, then it blocks the block, right? You've probably seen that when you open the editor and the, the block is like the, the editing is blocked. You can't edit it, you have to resolve it, right? It's because of that. So that I believe, like, yeah, I don't understand why this option is even <laughs> enabled in the editor. It never should be edited unless you know what you're doing. And so I would always disable it for the uh, end users so that they can't uh, edit uh, any code. And it can be done through PHP hook. It's called block editor settings all. And it's in the documentation. The, this exact example uh, is in the, in the documentation if you're looking for it. So uh, you, you can also uh, use it. So um, yeah, so that's for the, for the layout. Uh, I think we really, really were able to achieve something that is uh, actually able to edit in one place and, uh, and it serves the purpose. It has still some challenges and a lot of these APIs are still in the early in, um, in development. Also the sync pattern overrides, this is also using the block binding. So it's not finished yet and will not be finished in the next version of WordPress. It's just like a first iteration. So we'll still need to wait a few more months to, for it to be finalized because at the moment it, it has some limitations. So maybe it's not ready for using in production websites for the clients, but uh, you can sort of see what can be built with them. And the last thing is the styles. So just a short, shortly about the styles. So first thing that is really important when building for the block editor is that the whole point of having the block editor is to offer this, what you see is what you get experience for the user so they can edit, they, they can have this feeling of editing on the front end as if they were on the front end, even though they are not in the front end, they are in the back end, but uh, just have this feeling. And to have this feeling, the back end styles should match the front end. So you see for my uh, page, the back end, this is the WP admin and this is the front end. It looks almost the same. Uh, there are some differences because on the back end we have some UI elements like the buttons because uh, on the back end they just edit the content, uh, the content so there has to be some sort of UI for editing the content which is uh, unnecessary for the front end. But basically this is the styles are matching. And in the beginning of uh, Block Editor when it uh, was released uh, and it was included in WordPress, uh, the biggest problem with the editor was that it relied on the theme authors to style the backend of the blocks in the same way as the front, uh, as the front end. And most theme authors didn't do it. And so it uh, created this feeling that the bro uh, Block Editor is broken because it almost never worked uh, correctly because the style wasn't matching the front end. And so that's this is very important to take care about it and you know to care about the styles on the back end, even though it like tra traditionally when we build in classic way, we only think about the front end. But when building for the block editor, we also need to think about the back end because the back end experience, the editing experience is also important, is as important as the front end experience. Uh, and back in the days, we needed two different style sheets. It was difficult to style it because you needed different styles for the back and for the front, and it was like complex. So I'm not uh, surprised that the theme authors didn't care to do it. But today we have the theme JSON. The theme JSON is the, like a central config file for uh, styling and uh, for settings of the editor. Uh, and we can do quite a few things with it. So first thing that we can do, we can adjust the settings for the editor. Uh, so uh, we can, for example, uh, set the color palette and also restrict the color palette. So only the color palette from the style guide will be available for the users, like here, like here in the in this example. And this one is the default one. We, if we don't restrict them, they they would have uh, like the color picker. They can pick any color. So that's what we most of the times don't want when building custom um, uh, custom uh, websites. Uh, and there are quite a few more settings like this one. So we can restrict certain options for the users. And also we can use this PHP filter uh, that I've used before for the code editor uh, to also play around with user roles. So you can have different settings for, for example, admins or power users or whatever you say, whatever you call it. And then different settings for like regular editors. So maybe some users can have more options than the others. So this is really interesting and you can take a look at it. The documentation for uh, Team JSON is very good. So uh, I'll just encourage you to go and check it. 
And that the second thing uh, that can be done with Steam JSON is to style the block, style um, the, not mainly the blocks, the, the, uh, the content of the block editor. Uh, and uh, the site editor um, gives us this uh, style book, I think it's called style book, where you can preview all um, uh, all uh, blocks. Uh, I don't know if there are only core blocks or also custom blocks. We will did probably only core blocks uh, that are uh, that can be previewed. What's the, the default style of the blocks? So uh, it's important to style them through the team JSON also and preview in this style book to see if they it will work well because. All blocks that I, are available in the insert, I, I believe it has to be styled and work correctly. You can't just leave some core blocks that are unused, unstyled, and then the, because the users, when they see it in the uh, in the in the editor, they would try to use it. So it everything should work. That's what I believe. So if you're not using a, uh, or you not, don't plan to. Uh, to use some of the blocks, they can be deregistered or something like that. So they're not available in the inserter and the user can just use it. And then uh, because it feels like it, it was broken if it's not styled. So that's why it's important to style it correctly. And the team JSON documentation is uh, really good and I encourage you to take a look at it. Okay, so that's all from me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Oh. So do we have time? This is for you. Thank so you. we have a time for a little Q&A. So raise your hand if you have a question and the guys with a gray t-shirt will give you a mic. Uh, if you can stop moving. Okay. I want to ask you a question. I'm not sure if you already covered that point. Uh, maybe it's just a different. I now trying to move from a known uh, full site editor uh, theme to uh, a fully full site editor theme. And the problem is that I'm not a developer and I'm using my, my old team, Bloxy, uh, used to have some um, product review. It has the, 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 this uh, custom post type. And I'm not really sure how to move uh, all the, um, the current post with this custom post type to the, to the, to the new blo block theme, having a, you know, a more standard, um, more consistent, sorry, approach. So thank you for you are able to, to help me with that. Okay, so if I understand correctly, you're trying to build a template for a post type, right? The new template in this full set editing. Uh, so I'm just trying to have or uh, to find a way to have uh, this um, this custom post types, th this post with this custom t post types uh, to uh, port and have as similar as possible to now, now that we are in the uh, full site editor? Well, <laughs> I think it's a very uh, custom use case. So I would take a look at the template editor. So to see the template for the single post type, this would be the first uh, place that I would look like because you would have to see how the current post type is built. Is it the build with the uh, in a classic way, right, in a PHP file, or is it already built with the site editor and then you just need to edit the site, the, the, the blocks, or you just have to create the new, um, uh, the new template in the, uh, from blocks. Uh, but you know, there's not too much context from what you're saying, so it's very difficult for me to, exp to, to tell you what to do, actually. Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> Um, we have, I think, one here before that. Is it working? Yeah. Uh, we okay. have one here. Ah, just okay. a moment. Of course. Okay. Uh, so this is not really a question. Maybe I have a comment regarding it. I uh, had the same problems with you, like the, the the things you said about like creating a template and having like a complex layout and want to like restrict the user to edit parts of it. And I found 
recently to use the template preview inside the, the editor for the user and force it when they open the, the editing the post type. So, so they can only edit the part inside the layout. And I, I recommend to others to look at it, look, look at it because it's this more immersive feeling. Oh, um, is it in core or is it? Yeah, in... it's in core. Oh, I don't know. So yeah. uh, in the sidebar, okay. uh, it's possible to preview the template and then it's only editable inside like the, the part that is post content that everything is visible for the user around this. I, yeah. I guess it's a step to the site wow. editor um, only experience. Wow, experience. thank you for it. I didn't yeah. know about it. Yeah, yeah cool. I recommend to look at it. Thanks. Okay, another question here. Okay. I want to. Yeah. Hi, Magdalena. Hi. Thank you for your speech. Very interesting. I have a few questions, if okay. I may. So, uh, first one: If uh, is it possible to share the materials that you showed today about uh, custom taxonomy implementation and uh, the UI for custom taxonomy? I'm quite interested to see how it's implemented in code. Yeah, okay, you can, if you can uh, write to me, for example, on LinkedIn. Yeah, I can share with you. Cool. Uh, second thing, uh, you mentioned that uh, creating custom patterns or like working with patterns, uh, it's a, basically a database thing. Yes. Uh, but uh, I actually have been working with patterns recently and uh, for instance in 2024, uh, I've seen that you basically can work, build them in PHP so they are not saved in the database. Yes, but they are not synchronized. Yeah. You can, but yes, and then you uh, insert them, and and uh, they would insert the predefined blocks. But th this is it; they are not synchronized. Then so, but if you want to keep them synchronized between many instances, then yeah. they are saved to the database because they're like a post type. Then the content of the post type yeah. is loaded. All right. Uh, the next one is, <laughs> sorry, um, so um, you mentioned uh, the style book, which is yeah. awesome thing. I think it came in 6.5. Yeah. Um, do you know the way to first to see it on the front end? For instance, if I have a designer who built everything for me, like designed everything, and I built, uh, and I have the style books that I would like to share with designer to check if I have or pixel perfect everything. Yeah. Uh, do you know if it's possible to see it on front end? And is it possible to edit the style book to add some more things? You can edit the styles from within the site editor, from styles editor, uh, and then, for example, export it uh, to the file if you want. Uh, but to the front end, I think you would have to build like some some style book like this one on the front end. I, I don't know about it. Yeah, with all the blocks, because I, I haven't heard about this, that there would be the feature built in core that you can actually preview on the front end, but, but actually that's the point of having it styled on the back end so that it's matching perfectly well the front end so that you wouldn't need to have the separate view, you know, so that, that's the whole point of it. Yeah, but the beauty of it is that it's one place where you can see fonts and, and colors and everything in one place, so uh, instead, and it's, it, it's built automatically. So you don't don't have to like create a page and then do yeah. all that. So that was uh, I was interested. The last question, I promise. Um, so uh, <laughs> there are uh, sometimes we build like custom patterns, for instance. And uh, when you register a custom blocks for a uh, custom block or extend the core block, for instance, you, you there is a hook to uh, add CSS file to it. Yes. And the beauty of it is that, first of all, the CSS file is used only when you use this block. Yes, that's true. And secondly, it's uh, automatically using the CSS styles inside of, on, in the back end. Uh, is there the same thing for patterns? Hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know, but I don't think so because patterns are built with blocks. So the CSS from individual blocks that create the pattern, they are loaded. And you don't, well, you, you shouldn't need to have separate uh, CSS if, for the pattern. Uh, if, if you have yeah. the case where mm -hmm. you have a custom pattern, mm -hmm. for instance, with some specific block variation only for this pattern mm -hmm. in some block, 
I don't know because I haven't checked it, but I think it's worth taking a look at because I think the pattern um, is actually like WP block. So it might be the case that it loads it uh, also conditionally, but I'm not sure. I haven't checked it, so uh, I would have to take a look at it, into it. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Perfect. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Hi, thanks for, for the speech. It was very, very clear. Um, I'm actually coming from like the Bricks Builder, and I was trying to, to check out the, the Gutenberg and there is any like breakpoints or like for the responsive part because I did not see anything about that. I was wondering, like, is the only thing stopping me from you know mm -hmm. moving to the... Mm -hmm. to the yeah, Gutenberg? no, there is no breakpoints and I don't think there are plans to add them uh, because the idea of the team developing Gutenberg is that you shouldn't be, uh, you shouldn't have to set the, the, the uh, different styles for different uh, devices. It should be fluid. So for example, you can set uh, some fluid values on, for example, the fonts, so that it scales when you when the um, this, uh, viewport of the screen mm -hmm. would, uh, would get smaller than the uh, font, for example, or the padding, the margins, they would scale uh, like uh, proportionally. So that's the, the idea. I know it's not ideal because uh, it works really well for fonts, for paddings, but sometimes for columns, for example, we want to uh, sort of uh, have a control when, when, for example, the columns, you know, collapse from two columns to one column and there is no control for that. So the only thing to do is if you can code for the, uh, and extend the editor, you can add your own controls to the, through the block uh, filters. Uh, and uh, and then uh, add some more control over the, the breakpoints. Uh, but at the moment in core, there is no like breakpoint thing. So yeah, it's it's still not there. Right, and probably so it will never be, there will be some other solution, but not like the classic breakpoints. Okay, so let's say I need to change the order on the mobile version. I need to use custom code to, to do that, yes, right? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. At the moment, yes. Thank you. But I think the team, there I saw some discussions on GitHub that they already thinking about it because some use cases like, such as this one, like changing the order of columns, uh, this is uh, quite necessary. So probably there will, will, will be some solution for it, but, but I don't know exactly how it's going to be solved. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? No, we're good. Okay, let's give a big round of applause for Magdalena. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.